So in this part we are going to make the combat a little more interesting because he can actually fight back now and the player have some health it can lose and the goblin have uh, also attack time, a basic damage so we are starting to have a real fight here. If you're still following along, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate if you subscribe to the channel to support it or actually just leave a comment and say oh, I'm still following along, it will mean a lot. Um, and if you have any suggestion or feedback, please leave that too. So let's get started. It's time for the enemy to be able to hit back and we will do this fairly simple. So it just be basic attacking and later we will build on. And I think in some tutorials uh, in the future, we will make like a boss fight and stuff like that. But for now, it's just the enemy is able to hit and we do take damage. So let's go into the AI controller, find the area where uh, the enemy is within distance of our player and say, first of all, um, we need to make sure that he's not uh, returning to his spawn point, so that needs to be false. And then we will say get component animator, and we will say we'll make a bool, set bool, and we will call it can attack, and we will set it true. So, let's start uh, fixing this part. So, let's go into the game and save the animator. Go to the enemy. Uh, take the goblin. So, right now we have a blend tree with our uh, movement. So, we need to make a new state and call this attack idle. And we will make, say, okay, and uh, have no exit time and need a bool. So, can attack and make sure you spell it the same way as you did in the coding. So, if that's true, we go to the attack um, idle, and if it's false, then we go back. Um, let's just like this and then we say okay we need also to make like a basic attack and on the Maximo website you can find like different types of idols that we can use for this um, you can do the regular idol or you can find a new one that's more fit for combat um, I actually found uh, enemy goblins one that I like so I will take this into my project uh, hit this one and it looks a bit like this if you want the same one it's just like a regular fighting idol then I set on loop time and then I'll apply it and I actually need to find the attack one as my attack punching here and I want to duplicate it so now I have two punching like that and I will delete the other one and I will show you later why we do that uh, let's make it small again, go into the animation, click on the, this one animator. So in here we do idle, find the goblin, let's see, play movement, this one. So let's see. So right now, if we get in range, it should start to do the attack animation. So let's test that. So let's pick the goblin. Um, 
and I just stand still and have this battle stance now. For that, it needs to be able to do basic attacks. So we will put up a transition here and say it will be a trigger and we call it basic attack one. So if we trigger basic attack one, then we will go up here and we will add the see here we will add the motion punch like that and it, this one when it goes back should have exit time and when it go up there it should not have one so you can like if you want to test this really fast you can like go into your uh, script like this and say okay now we are attacking and we want to do get a uh, animator and we want to do set trigger uh, did we call it basic attack one do like that uh, true and then you can test it out and I have some problems here uh, shouldn't say equal to true actually like that so we started and put up the animator Goblin, okay. So we get him in range, and he starts to punch. But he kind of keeps staying there, so he will keep punching on us, which is not so good. So we need to do something like we did with the player. Um, so let's go in here and just comment this one out again. We will use it later. So uh, we need to get hold on the enemy target script so for that we need to go up here and say okay we have the enemy target let's call it enemy target and we do enemy target equals to enemy target then we go scroll down again and we say okay enemy target dot attack so we wanted to go to the enemy target and do uh, this attack function we are creating now in the enemy target public void uh, attack like that and now in the controller you see the lines are gone so something should happen in this attack and what we want it to happen is actually we want wanted to take this one uh, just close some of these and put that one in there instead and we also want it to actually we want to make like we did uh, last time we make like a coroutine instead so let's call this basic attack like that put it down there instead and this one we call the basic attack. Or oh, we actually have to write start, coroutine, basic attack, like that. And this one we will say we have to test if we can attack to make that. And then yield, return, new. Wait for seconds, and that should be our auto attack time. And then uh, reset uh, if we can attack, and then we do attack again. So it kind of reminds us about how we did inside the combat player, like. Uh, see have the basic attack so we have to like can attack 
then we set the trigger, then we wheel, then we reset it. So we kind of have to do the same. And if I had thought this through from the beginning, I kind of could have the both codes use the combat player. But yeah, for me, it's, it's a bit messy to change now. So if you have the time, you can change it so you can like uh, use the enemy and the player to use this combat player. But for now, we do it like this. Uh, so we have to have a new public. We can actually make serialized float like that. So that was the attack timer. And then we need a, a serialized rule uh, can attack. Actually, let's make it an inch can attack and make it equal to one. And so can attack is equal to zero. When we read the auto attack timer, we can say it's equal to one again. And we can only attack if the can attack is equal to one. So this attack will only happen if we actually can attack. And because we don't instantly go down to the basic attack anymore, there should be plenty of time for us to go back to the attack idle. So let's see if that's going to happen. So we meet up with our enemy. Say hello, enemy. We will hit a bit on him. Um, I think I have a... Need to check what else can attack needs to be one attack times need to be two. So let's try again. So we come over, he hits us, go back, hits us, wait. So you keep waiting two seconds. If we change this to five, he hits us, you have to wait longer. So we actually have a, a way to interact now. And we can try to like run away from him, but he keeps staying in his attack position if we run away. So we need to make it easier to come out of this attack idle. So we need to move the exit time like that. So let's see what happens now. And we, we kind of forgot to in here in the distance and returning point to say okay well if you're not within range then your you can attack is equal to false like that and then we can see if that works comes we hit he starts his attack we start to run and he starts to run after us he gets close again you try to hit us, he's dead. Okay. So now we actually want him to do some damage to us. So we need to go into the player. Uh, or sorry, the enemy. And go to animations and find the punching. And as you can see, it's yet again read only. So we will go into the project and say punch. We will duplicate this one and remove the other one. And we cannot because we're still using it so in the animator we will say okay the punch here need to be swapped to this one and if you want to clean a bit up you can remove it now apparently not um i see after why i cannot move it but then you take the punch now it's not read only then you play the animation and you see like when the punch is so see that could be a spot so it's bef before it takes his arm back could be around here then you hit this one and right now we don't have like um, a function we want to use so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open our scripts again and this time we're gonna open the enemy target script so into the enemy target script we go 
and from there we will make a new public void enemy hits like that so what will happen on the enemy hit well we do want the health uh, and health component to be able to get uh, and here we need to get hold on the anime controller and take their target and get the component and so on so up here we need to make an AI controller and for some reason I cannot get it so I think I have to say using RPG dot uh, I don't think it's combat, I think it's player that and then we say AI controller let's call it AI controller like that and at the start the AI controller is equal to get component AI controller and then we say AI controller dot target um, get component get health so we actually have set it up uh, for us like so the goblin have a target and we can take that target and we will use it for for this health oh. so we set it up so we have a target when we do the attacking and we will take the health for that target and calculate what is um, their health so we will say health uh, health component health com health com secret dot take damage basic attack um, yeah and we will up here make a serialized field int basic attack make sure that it's spelled the right way and now we have too many so we will call it basic attack damage I can see like that that then go back to the game and we look at the goblin it's now have uh, auto attack time can attack basic attack damage and we will say the damage is three and we will look at our player if it have a health component on it it does not have a health component we will give it a health component and uh, set the health to 100 and we will just now yeah we can do like that um, then we go into the game we will attack and we will see that they forgot to set up the animation event so we take the goblin and take the punching and take the animation event and say okay what should you do on this event you should do enemy hit and we'll try again go over go over hit and he died but we also see that the player have taken some damage um, so now we can take damage and in the next tutorial we're just gonna set up really fast what's happened if we die and then we're gonna move on from there